in Argentina and in Costa Rica, in, in Costa Rica, and the parasites we were able to collect from them. So just a, a brief history about me. I'm well, my name is Ezekiel van der Hooven. I'm a veterinarian. I've been uh, in touch with uh, animals uh, all, most of, of my life. I had the, the opportunity that, that my grandfather had a farm and that helped me a lot to, to pursue my, my degree and, and interact with all sorts of type of animals. I'm from the north of Argentina, uh, especially from the province of uh, Misiones, which is uh, very well known by, by the Iguazu Falls. I don't know if you had the chance to know there, but it's a really nice place. And I, I've been living there since 2011, working in mainly with wildlife. And as you know, the, the institute where we work with Juliana is also there. Um, well, as I said, I, I, in 2010, I got my, my veterinarian degree. After that, I started to work in wildlife uh, veterinary in a wildlife refugee in, in the province of Misiones. And I started to interact with uh, researchers doing or collaborating with uh, captures of a lot of mammals such as jaguars, monkeys, um, um, and, other, and other species. So that got me like the idea of pursuing a PhD. I applied for a fellowship at CONICET, which is the the Argentinian uh, scientific uh, agency. Um, my project was uh, mainly in like under the One Health um, framework. Um, so I study it, the the parasites that parasites and other diseases such, such as viruses and bacteria that could be uh, shared in the domestic and in the wild uh, interface in the in the Atlantic forest in, in Misiones in the jungle. So I work with domestic cattle and with samples from big herbivores such as tapirs, uh, broken deer, peccaries, uh, capybaras. And the idea was to see if uh, the human impact on the area could explain some of the highest prevalence of some parasites, if there was some parasites or pathogen sharing. Um, so th that was my, my first experience with uh, uh, research and publishing and getting all, all, the, all the way in this road of uh, learning about, uh, 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 well, mainly pathogens, but then my, my interests started going through to the parasites. So in 2021, I, 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 I got a postdoc also from CONICET where we proposed to study the, 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 the parasites that, that could be in the, in the Sinatra order in, in Argentina, in, mainly in the Chaco region, which is a, a dry forest in north center of Argentina. Um, and, in 2023, I got like a fellowship to do a research in Costa Rica by the OTS, which is the Tropical Studies uh, Organization, where we propose the same project, but also adding sloth, because in, in Argentina, we don't have uh, that uh, those animals, only anteaters and armadillos. Um, so, um, we propose different types of uh, field work collection methods. Uh, both places are really different. Uh, so just to give you a quick uh, idea of how it is, um, the Argentinian Chaco forest is, uh, so the, the American Chacoan forest is mainly in Bolivia, Paraguay, and Argentina, but most of the distribution is in, in Argentina. Uh, it is an area with a lot of uh, endemism and wildlife. Um, in Argentina, at least, there is a, a, a high diversity of armadillos. Also there, um, armadillos are um, hunted and they have like a cultural implication on, on 
everyday life. They have like parties, they, they do a lot of stuff. Well, there is also like an instrument made of armadillos. So um, I try to uh, propose a, a project where we also have that in mind. Um, not only the animal as, as, as host of parasites, but also this interaction with the local communities. Um, and in, in Costa Rica, we mainly propose the studies in, in primary forests, in, in, uh, in the biological stations uh, that we work on, and in uh, urban areas. So in, in Costa Rica, there are some, some areas where you can find sloth, uh, you know, really close to the cities or even in parks in the cities. Um, so even though those areas, you know, one is like a dry forest, the other is more like a tropical jungle, even though depending on wh where you go in Costa Rica, you can have, have dry forest. Um, both uh, areas are like having the same uh, threats such as deforestation, monocultures, struggle with local communities, um, cattle ranching. So uh, the idea was also try to uh, see if we can propose a, a project where we can uh, use those different scenarios as uh, areas where we can you know, do field work and, and do different ecological analysis. So, well, I, I know most of you know, but you know it's, it's always good to remember. Um, Sanatrans are uh, the only marmal order which are uh, from the American continent. Uh, this divided mainly in three big groups, the armadillos, the sloth, and the anteaters. Uh, armadillos are the most diverse group of these uh, mammals. Uh, here there are some of them, uh, but of course there are at least it depends which uh, um, mammalogies you talk. They could be 20, 25. Is is you know there are some species of armadillos with, where we don't know if they are the same species or they are like you know uh, subspecies or new species. But mainly you have this diversity where you have the giant armadillo around 40, 50 kilos, and you can have the Peaches, I, I don't I really I don't really know the name on, in, in English, but we call them peachy ciegos or it depending also on the area. Um, and most of them, depending on the area you work, uh, are prone to hunting for eating for local consumption. Uh, some species such as the giant armadillo in Argentina, they are not hunted, but they are really sensitive to habitat loss, so we are losing them. Uh, besides this, uh, my, my project as a postdoc, I collaborate with the Giant Armadillo pro project and we are seeing how, how these animals are disappearing in, in the Chaco region. Um, so the other groups, uh, well, as I said, in Argentina, we don't have the, the sloth. Uh, there are six, or no, seven species, eight species of sloth. I, 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 I don't remember, but in Costa Rica, we have only these two. Uh, and uh, the anteaters, we have uh, these two here, the Tamandua tetradactyla and the giant anteater. And these two are in, in Costa Rica. I never got the opportunity to see the, the silky anteater. Uh, I, I've seen videos and it's really small. It would be really nice to have uh, uh, access to, to those animals. Um, so I divided the presentation to show the differences between the fieldwork in the Chaco region is more like a community engaged fieldwork, working with local communities and hunters. So we mainly go to, to the field. We, we try to look for roadkill animals, but as you know, in those areas, it's really hot and uh, you have to be really lucky to access one of these animals and they're, they they be still use, useful for for having, you know, getting the guts out and analyzing what they have inside. So the other 
uh, approach we we thought is working with local communities, visiting them. I don't know if you know how is there, but these are local communities really, really uh, far away from you know urban areas. There are people who don't have electricity, cell phone. Um, uh, how you say like access is really really scarce and they uh, it, it is a really dry area and they really rely on the rain most of the water they have is mainly because they collect it so th these communities have a lot of like struggles so uh, I try to uh, connect with people who are like interested in the in the project, but also try to um, give them some advice or or help regarding you know animal health or or whatever. So um, these communities rely uh, they they are culturally they are really um, you know they 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 have the this idea of consuming armadillos really as a cultural uh, habit. And the, some communities or some families or whatever, sometimes only eat one species of armadillo, sometimes they eat the species of armadillo in different seasons. It's really like interesting to see that. And also like how like in a, I don't know, one community 50 kilometers away from the other one, the names of these animals change. So basically what I did was uh, a first year of just, you know, spending time with them, drinking mate, which is a really popular drink in Argentina, talking about how is their life there, uh, talking about how many armadillos they see, how often do they kill them, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, identifying key uh, you know, families that would um, be interested in the project and give them like collection kits where I teach them how to, you know, after they kill the animal, collect all that. Um, and then after that, I, I will try to go back every three or four months to, to collect the, the, the samples. Regarding Costa Rica, the field work is really different. Hunting is really, um, is, is, is forbidden and uh, armadillos uh, or sloth or other species are not eaten. So I had to rely more on collaborations uh, uh, working with uh, these animals. Also the project uh, before engaging on analyzing the parasites in, in sloth, we proposed a mini project in the station where we collected uh, poop samples from both species of sloth. Uh, the good thing is that from these species, uh, you know, you, you can identify uh, uh, by the shape which, which uh, which species belong the, the the poop, and this is where we uh, started um, also analyzing uh, samples for diet. Um, so we collected around forty samples. I don't remember, like yeah, forty samples, and we tried to identify by coproparasitology the 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 egg structures we saw, and. Um, it was really interesting to see that uh, even though we collected samples from urban areas, uh, the, the samples from the primary forest seemed to have more egg uh, morphotypes. Uh, some morphotypes were really prevalent, such as this morphotype, uh, this cestora, protozoa, but we weren't really able to assign any like uh, species or, or genus or for example, we, we believe this could be Leuris, but we weren't sure. So th this gave us the idea that, you know, we need to really get samples from adult slots uh, to, to try to identify the, the parasites uh, because we, we were feeling we were like in a dead end here. So after that, as I said, I, try, I started to uh, build up a, a group of collaborators also in Costa Rica, uh, mainly veterinarians, but also uh, the Slot Conservation Foundation, which is led by Rebecca Cliffe, who works with uh, GPS in, in Slot, and they, the team have access uh, to a lot of uh, dead animals, also with the station, but with also conservation, which is uh, 
an NGO that works in, in the Pacific, uh, wildlife refugees where they, you know, sometimes they get a live sloth that are electrocuted, but then they die. So they started to, to collect all the samples. With that in mind, like we build up like a framework, um, you know, we get the dead animal, it could be a sloth. We try to get advantage of all the samples, even though we, we are not going to analyze them, maybe other groups will. And uh, thinking on parasites, we propose this like framework, like where first we need to get like a good taxonomy and try to rename or name the, the, the parasites we were seeing. But also we wanted to build like a library, like a genetic library to try to match by future metagenomics analysis, the poop and the parasites and other an analysis you can do with, with that technique. So under that framework, we started to get our collection better, go into the field, even I, I found or some people give us the dead animal opening and doing this process of analyzing. Um, in, in Argentina, we started to strengthen our our group of taxonomy, uh, Juliana is the, the head of the lab of parasitology in, in Iguazú. Uh, Cecilia is a, a, a biologist who is really a, a really good taxonomist and is helping a lot. Barbara is another PhD student who is working with uh, opossums. I don't know if, I think she was invited by Scott someday, but I don't know if she gave the talk. She's doing a really interesting work with opossums in the Atlantic forest and parasites and, and interaction between those, those, uh, those opossum species. After that, we try to uh, start naming the species we found. Some of them were new records for the area or new host. And some of them, we still don't know what they are like this. Uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to, to do the stain or we don't have all the abilities to do it, but see, we're trying to build up this collection. We have this Sestora from, from the Two Finger Sloth, which is really hard to identify. Uh, Cecilia is doing a really nice job, but we still are not sure what species could be or if it's a new species, because we don't we didn't find any reports on on this on Sestora and Two Finger Sloth. Um, so we started to see that th this was a really like at least for us in, in our uh, region, uh, difficult to, to, to identify. But the idea is to, you know, start drawing and start, you know, getting all these structures with their name. Um, and just in these two years with this framework applied, we are really happy that at least we could like have 30 species uh, collected. Some of them are already really well known. Some of them, as I said, are really like new hosts. I'm not going to be specific of that. I, I'm not, I don't consider myself like a, you know, hardcore parasitologist. And I, I feel like I'm in between the disciplines. Um, and for sure, Cecilia will have more, more data or more specific on this. But just uh, what, what we think is that by applying this, this type of framework and getting like all the steps really like well done. Um, you know, in two years we, we, we got a lot of samples and we still have samples we, we didn't open. And um, so like, this is like the first step. Most of these samples are informally, so we, we are not able to do genetics. Now we are starting to collect everything in alcohol. And so this is one of the parts that uh, Cecilia has been doing, uh, trying to set up this, this collection. And lastly, uh, here right now, um, this year I started my second postdoc at Brown, at Brown University. I arrived in May, so I'm kind of new here at Rhode Island. Also here is a bit hot today, but we, we've been having really cold uh, days. And um, I'm starting to learn and to apply all the work I've been doing before, uh, but with uh, molecular uh, analysis, all of the samples we collect from Argentina, from Costa Rica, try to get them here, try to learn the protocols, uh, try to you know learn different uh, 
aspects of uh, conser conservation of the sample. I'm working with Tyler, who is uh, my PI, and Anna, who is the, the lab manager. We're trying and we're getting our first uh, data here uh, of, of the parasites we collected. Some of these parasites have been already identified in, in Argentina. Uh, some we are still waiting for identification. So um, with this work, at the same time, we're analyzing all the samples from the poop samples from the armadillos, anteaters, and sloth, and get all the information on diet. With the idea that we we want to see if we can find also um, some uh, connection between uh, diet, the, the prevalence of some parasites. Um, so I still feel like we are like in, you know, in, in, in the really low uh, stage of, of the of the project, like getting all the techniques uh, and the protocols uh, good. Um, but I think uh, if, if if we can, you know, after we, we do all these uh, all these steps, that uh, we will have the opportunity to either work with other collaborators or have new students or or whatever, and and get all the samples we already collected, but new samples that we we want to collect in the future. Um, so yeah, that's most of my my work. I I I. I Still, I feel I still uh, don't have a lot to to say about my my work here at Brown because I I arrived in in May and you know we got got the summer and I'm just starting to to get my hands in the in the molecular lab. Uh, so that's a, a a brief presentation of everything we've been doing so far. And thank you. <laughs> Wow, thanks very much. It was excellent information and a lot of uh, materials flowing into your system. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. thank you. How um, how hard was it to uh, convince the, the people who lived in the areas to save the information for you when you when you were able to um, hang out with them for a while? Did was it was everybody pretty um, pretty amiable? Were they? Yeah. Uh, um wanting to help so in my experience uh, it, it is a bit harder to work with uh, professionals such as wildlife vets or or institutions uh, i i think there are two we have two like advantages one of them is that uh, people in the Chaco region are really open they're really grateful when you come visit them and hang out with them the, there, these are people who've been living there more than two hundred years. Um, so they they're really, even though they 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 have you know they live like in poor conditions, they are they. It is not people that went there because they didn't have opportunities. They they really like uh, and have a lot of uh, attachment to to the land, and. And it's, they're really culturally really rich. So when you know people from other places come, they're really grateful. Especially if you come back, you know, if, if you do it once, maybe you you won't get a lot of uh, data. But if you are like you know uh, coming back uh, from time to time, they will really appreciate that. <clears throat> Even though cell phone uh, connection is, is bad, they manage to get some. So WhatsApp and you know. From time to time, just text them, ask them, you know, how are they? Uh, it helps a lot. Another thing that maybe is more like my advantage is that it is easier for me being a vet. So they like, when I talk to them, they really understand like the, the point of the project. Like, oh yeah, you know, we are e eating this and we can get, you know, maybe we can get sick of this. So it is cool that you know there is a guy uh, analyzing this and telling us um, if there is any risk or or whatever. Even though it is not like the goal of the of the project, I I didn't frame this project as a one health or 
or I don't know, like public health project. But you know, if of course, if if we find some zoonotic parasites or or whatever, um, that we will uh, tell the authorities yeah, and tell them, them about it, right? So yeah. Oh, so I have, yeah, yeah. I have a I have a question about uh, one of the lists you showed. Uh, Tenia reported from Daisy Puss. I assume those were larvae. Yeah. Well, that's. Uh, Deep that part. was the 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 um, one of the last uh, things that Cecilia found. I uh, she she wrote me yesterday. That's why I, I added them. We are not sure yet because Cestoras or any from those family for us are really hard to identify. Um, we 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 are still learning to do the, like the correct stains. So even though we put it there, um, I will I will be. Be patient to see if 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 they are really tenias. So, so yeah. Did, yeah. Did she call them tenia? Because everybody calls tapeworms tenia down there, you know. Yeah. So yeah. that may be just because it was a tapeworm, so it was tenia. But yeah, exactly, exactly. They, I, I, it's more that 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 uh, approach. Exactly. Did you find any uh, echinococcus in any of those armadillos? N no, uh, I, I didn't. Because you know, uh, up in in. Uh, in Brazil, they reported um, Echinococcus uh, oh, okay. fogoli from armadillos from in the Amazonian part of of, uh, of Brazil. So that's an interesting one. I just wondered okay. if it's been appearing yet because it was they were larvae, you know, juvenile or larvae in the okay. uh, mesentery. So that's kind of cool. Oh, okay. No, yeah. no, no. We we the thing. So one of the bad things of, on working with with the communities is for example that we only get access to the guts yeah we 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 won't get access like to the liver because they right. eat that <laughs> or, or so yeah. sometimes that you know they, they get the knife they cut it and they put the hand and pull and put it yeah. in the so they, they don't do like um a really <laughs> exactly so yeah so when we were working in Bolivia, we proposed, well, we're still working there, but we proposed to set up um, freezers all through the lowlands of Bolivia and have people come in and drop their their specimens off in the bush meat uh, where they were eating the animals. And so we did not get funding, but we had the same idea that you were using there to mm -hmm. take the specimens from the people as they were collecting them. And we had a really good network. We had it all set up to do, but then the funding didn't come through. Mm. So unfortunately, but um, still, it would be the way to do it. And what we wanted to do was look at the Echinococcus uh, fogoli and Echinococcus oligarthrus through okay. the lowlands of Bolivia, because we found it there um, several times now, and we you know, we published on that, but pretty cool. Um, did you guys find any, I don't notice that you put found any Mathematinia? Did you got uh, the big tapeworms from the giant anteater? Did you get any of uh, the tapeworms from those that you could identify? No, that that the the most uh, big stuff we found. So mm -hmm. we only got one one giant anteater yet. Yeah, you don't want to go yeah. killing those very often. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the How one. How did you that get it? Was pure pure luck. So the history was that I was the, was this uh, like this our... Argentinian winter. So I went to visit um, one park ranger. Uh, yeah. We were about to leave, uh, and one uh, neighbor just because in, in those parks are really really far away, and yeah. they are one of the few places where they have Wi-Fi. So a lot of the local communities there, you know, go every, I don't know one or twice a day with the motorcycle, and they stay there like you know, texting. <laughs> so you know, it's really cool when you're there, and and people arrive. So. This this couple came. They were like you know texting whatever, and we would say hey goodbye, and they were like, did you see the roadkill animal? No, no. Yeah, it was there yesterday. Oof. So I thought wow. you know, uh, it's going to be all rotten, but when I, we arrived, it was there, and I did the full necropsy, and we didn't find any like um, sign of uh, you know roadkill or, or whatever 
the animal was not like on the road. It was like, you know, maybe five or no, 10 meters of the road. Wow. And it was really old. Um, oh, just an so, old guy. Yeah, it just like died. And when we arrived, uh, it was full of everything, like fleas jumping all over us. Oh, like, man. Ticks. Yeah, ticks. And, you know, um, I say it in English, the... Um, Piojos. No, no, the, the one that goes, the flea that goes under the skin, I don't Tung, know. The, tungas. Tungas, tungas, yeah. yes, exactly. Did you uh, get a tunga? Did you let Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got all of that. Uh, Did you we, get any in your toe? Not from there, but yes, by living in Misiones, it's really common. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I always get yeah. those in Bolivia. Yeah, 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 it's really common. It's exciting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we we opened wow. the, the the animal, and it, I think maybe when they saw them, it was like you know not already dead, yeah, uh, and was right. like agonizing. So we opened it, and the the animal was like you know just new. Yeah, it looked like, like it was in perfect shape from the images. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it was like you know it just you know happened to be there and the exact moment maybe. If, if I was inside uh, in the bathroom and didn't see the ah. the the that the that guy and because he, he didn't come to you know let us know because they, they see animals dead a lot of the time. Yes. So they, they just you know commented you, yeah, there, you know. Uh yeah, so good. so you know, like the, the good thing is that the area where we found it, we can, you know, think it like a, a really typical forest of, of Chaco. So, you know, we were happy, like we were getting this sample from not like a disturbed area that that is more common to find them, like right. the roadkill. Um, so when we opened it, we found a lot of this acanthocephala, but it was full, full. It's the, the, the first image I, I put in the... Uh, yeah, that's impressive. The Gigantorhynchus is very amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I never saw something like that. So I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say that he died of that, but I don't know how he could. All all the intestine wow. was like this. Yeah, was was the intestine perforated um, into the meson into the uh, peritoneum or not? No, no, wow. no, 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 no. Very no. nice. Yeah, huh. yeah. We we took it all perfectly out, and then when I opened in the in the lab, uh, I saw like all this, uh, and you could see like the succession, like the. You know, adults and then a bit younger, a bit younger, and then you see like this, but they're all the same. Um, so, so yeah, we, we didn't find any any cestora or any from um, any tapeworm in, in, in that sample. Well, you know, it doesn't look like there's any room in there for it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Because as you yeah, know, yeah. if you've read the literature, uh, tapeworms and acanthocephalans do compete for spaces in the in the duodenum. So very interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. So yeah. this this cestora here is like the same story in in the two finger sloth. Ah. Uh, it was the only only thing, and it was like long, long. I was like, I couldn't believe it. So I know it also was like a really old uh, sloth. So maybe wow. is is the same. Uh, I didn't find any other parasite there. I opened it and um, so so yeah, we we are still having like struggle to identify it because uh, at, at least in the literature we saw the only sister I describe is in the three finger slot, not in the two finger slot. Um, yeah. It we well Cecilia I believe is and Juliana also that probably from the Moniesia genus, but but not the. Benedini, but others, so they are still trying yeah. to to look for that. Um, yeah, the egg, the eggs looked interesting. So let's see. Yeah. Someone ask a question on the chat. Can you get, can okay. you access the chat? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think that one of the questions was about um, antihelminthic plants. Mm -hmm. Um so no, not that, that not that we know. The um, so the the anteaters uh um they don't eat plants. Yeah, so they they are mainly you know mimarcophagus. So yeah, they 
one of the problems we are going to have with the samples that we want to do diet is that um, we still don't have a lot of data on on the you know arthropods that are in the Chaco region. So we are probably when we do the metagenomics, we get families, but not uh, not genus or um, and not down to the species level. Yeah. So you know we we the other part someday one guy has to. Uh, collect ants and identify it from the Chaco region. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yes, uh, I, I don't know in the cycle of anteaters if there are ants that that have, a, you know, interfere in the cycle, but I know that some ants can do that. I, I read that in uh, some species that tapers could have, and because they are like browsers, they could like eat the, the ant. I don't remember right now the 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 name of the of the parasites, but uh, I, I I was aware that there are some ants that that can be part of a in the yeah they're an, they're anaplocephalids of some sort. Um, mm -hmm. other, well, one of the things I do know about because I'm working on it now is that the Raleatina, those small uh, tapeworms that generally occur in mammals and birds, is that lots of them have been shown to use uh, ants as the intermediate. Oh. And the interesting thing is that the ants uh, only the larvae are infected, and adult ants cannot become infected. So the larvae are infected by mm -hmm. the adult ants feeding the larvae the eggs that they've picked mm -hmm. up in the environment. So it's really uh -huh. cool. Yeah, very, very interesting there. So any other questions from anybody out there? I don't want to, I seem to be hogging all the questions. So, <laughs> so interesting. Thanks so much. So any other questions? <clears throat> Here's a uh, high scale. Thank you for your I, talk. Pretty interesting. I uh, I just want to know about the cyst that you found in the in anteater. Uh, do you find that cyst uh, in the abdominal cavity or in any specific organ? No, the the cyst uh, we found uh, was in the spleen. I have the picture. I didn't put the picture oh, there. Oh, spleen. Yeah, and it was fortunately that. I didn't realize I put it with the samples because I was going to throw it out when I did the necropsy because uh, Cecilia realized that, you know, she she asked me why did I put the spleen there? Uh, and uh, because I, I the usually the the liver and and and, the, and other organs, I, I check it in, in the field uh, because I don't have many charts to 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 look for it. Um but somehow I put this spleen there and she realized I, I will look for the picture way that I, I, I get off. It's here. pretty interesting because usually you don't see many, many uh, helmets in the spleens. I've, you know, hardly see any. I don't remember seeing any at all. So yeah, yeah. Interesting. It, it was a really merit of her. She was like, this is weird. And she started to, to dig up. I, I was yeah. like, I don't know. I never seen that, but I don't think that's a parasite, you know? Uh -huh. And she was like, uh, uh, you know. I guess I have seen it. I've seen a nematode um, encased in a cyst stuck on the spleen before. So I have I have noticed it. And that's been in some rodents like proecomies in Bolivia. Uh-huh. I so. think she she's identifying in the... Um, some it's kind of spiral is the one we identified, so we weren't able to. Okay, how about anything mm -hmm. else? Do you have other question, Kevin? No. Thank you, Sakil. No problem. Wait, I, I I'm just found the picture. Sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, we've got it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm advertising today. <laughs> okay. Oh shoot. I don't know if you see it, but this is. Oh, uh, yeah. You see those. I don't see if yes. you see my mouse, but it's. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was, you know, uh, it's all her merit. I, I, she found it and she was like, this is something, this is something. And she started to, to do the, the cuts. And, and she, huh. she, she believes this is the, the species. Yeah. Oh, so th these were inside those cysts? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Physoloptera, uh, juveniles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if 
Well, I don't know. I think Cecilia doesn't know if they were like migrating or just there. I don't know. Huh. Yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, this this anteater was really old, so maybe this you can find like weird stuff also, you know? <laughs> he had a lot of experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mucho experiencia. Bueno. <laughs> yes. So any other questions for anyone from anyone? So, yes, if you find Methamatinia, save it because we're working on that right now. Um, okay. Sounds from good. The, from any of these things because we're we're into it at this point. So, um, okay, Juliana, great. Look, Juliana, it looks like you're outside. Are you outside in the... In uh, the hi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are here. Oh, man. Very nice. Looks like maybe we lost Juliana. Yeah, we lost <laughs> I think she's in the university outside class. Oh, I see. Very cool. Yeah. Wish we could do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, I see Graciela came in with us. I haven't seen Graciela for a few years. So thanks for joining us. Anybody have any other questions? Um, and also, I've, got a, um, I've got a question. It's a bit silly, but I hope you don't go, mind. Go ahead, Olga. Speak, <laughs> thanks. Speaking about the uh, ants and the parasites, uh, the first thing uh, I, I think of is the... Uh, dicrosalium. So, is, yes, is it that's... possible that it's involved in, in the cycles? Was it yeah. found? Yeah, yeah, that dicrosalium. Yes, that's right. That was the one I, I I remember. Yeah, but yeah, we we still didn't. I mean, this is the first uh, anteater we we got. So, uh, we are looking forward to 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 get uh, more more animals. I mean, maybe, maybe uh, these hosts, I mean, these animals, they uh, biologically cannot be the host for the dicrosalium exactly, but I have no idea. I, I know only about herbivores, uh, like the ruminants, or maybe people, but I have no idea about such wild animals you're working with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. When I was doing the my, my PhD with the samples of tapirs, uh, and, and the other herbivores, Dicrocellum was one of the ones I, I, I was looking for. I, I never got the, the chance to, to collect the, the animals because it's really hard to find them in the jungle. Uh, but, but I remember, yeah, that the cycle was with, uh, with herbivores, as you said. Uh, I, 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 I didn't read anything in, in yeah, like anteaters or armadillos also eat, uh, can eat uh, ants. Uh, um, so far as I know, I never, I never heard of uh, uh, of of them as being a host. Yes. I see. Go ahead, Gracia. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Thank you. Yeah. My English is very, very bad, <laughs> but um, I saw that uh, pterygodermatitis is not ketofracti. Oh, affinis. The species? For me, for me, it's pterygodermatitis ketofracti. Ah, yes. It's possible because uh, pterygodermatitis ketofracti um, is a very, is, is a poor uh, specific nematode. And, and we found in Ketofractus villosus and Ketofractus yeah. velerosus, um, um, Tolipeutes matacus, Pterygodermatitis yes. Ketofracti. Antenia probably is Matevotenia. Yeah, the tape form that they found. Yeah. Uh, with uh, Scott and, and Mariel. Uh, we found Matevotenia um, in in marsupials. Yes, we found a lot of those in our paper. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it's probably a box. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. Very one. very interesting your your exposition. <laughs> muy, Thank you. Muy bueno, muy bueno, <laughs> muy lindo el trabajo. Hola, gracias. <laughs> Muchas gracias, Graciela. <laughs> Nada. <laughs> please, please join us every time that you can. We'll send you always the invitation. <laughs> okay. So bueno. um, any other questions or comments from anyone? 
All right. Yeah. Well, I guess we don't have any other comments, so I think we'll let it go. We have anything here. Um, we had a good group of people here today. I really appreciate everyone coming in after the big disaster um, of our election here, but um, you know, <laughs> I hope that we can still survive. And yeah. <laughs> uh, we will uh, make an, a, a firm attempt to do that. So um, before we go, Zeke, I want to let you know that I did record this. And so okay. I, can, I can make it available on our uh, Facebook page and also onto our YouTube if you want. Uh, if you don't want yeah. me to, that's fine too, because you may have released sensitive information. No, no, I think no problem with that. <laughs> okay, we will do that. So I really appreciate okay. the talk because it's kind of mimics some of our big, large scale surveys that we've done in Bolivia for, you know, since yeah. 1984 until 2000. So it's really exciting. And, you know, working with Graciela and Juliana and everybody else on this screen, it's, uh, it's like having a big family reunion. So um, <laughs> very, very cool. So Okay. And um, <laughs> all right. Hasta pronto. Muchas gracias para todo. Y su, uh, Thank you. Chalas. Muy bien. Muy bien. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias, Héctor. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, bye. bye Thanks. Chao. Bye, Scott. <laughs> so, Juliana, before you go, are you um, able to come into these sometimes or you're teaching now? I am teaching now. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I but noticed you're in, in lab. So okay, so we understand. Uh, but I I would try to to get well some of the the seminar, uh, but it's uh, the time is is difficult for me because of the my kids and and whatever. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we understand. But when when I have time, I try to to listen at least. <laughs> Yes, good. So we will record them all so you, you can have them later. So yeah, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. And so, so for next next semester, if anybody would like to give a talk, please volunteer. We're full for this semester now, but starting in January, we're going to do it again. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Necesitamos yes. más, uh, más personas para charlas en la uh, semestre próxima. I propose, okay. a, I propose a, a Lucas Garvin. Uh, she okay. uh, he works in 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 Anisaki from birds, oh, from no. marine birds. Okay, um, but <laughs> please, I'll, so okay. I'll send an email. Okay. All right, okay. everybody. Thank you so much, and Zeke. So good to meet you online. I don't know. I don't think we'd ever met before, but no, I'm no, here. no. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, yeah, keep nice going. If you generate more information, please volunteer again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. See everybody. I'm going to go ahead and line up now. Unless somebody has a, a, a point that they like to make, um, we can go. So thanks, everyone. Bye bye. 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 bye.